Father, we're so thankful for the truth of that song, that we are not a people without hope. But Jesus, we are a people of the kingdom that has come, and you have given us this great opportunity to be your messengers, Father, your, your heralds, the ones who stand in the midst of the world and the situations that we find ourselves in and who declare the kingdom of God is at hand. And Father, I pray that you would help us to step into that today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Always be yourself unless you can be Batman. Then always be Batman. <laughs> So today we're gonna uh, today we're gonna be exploring the gospel through the lens of the Lego Batman movie. Now the Batman character uh, has been around since about 1939, and has seen a whole lot of different variations and interpretations across the years. And uh, so if you're more familiar with those weird versions that happened in the 60s or something, then uh, you know just sit easy because it'll get a little bit of a tribute a little later on in one of our clips. Uh, but today we want to look specifically at the Lego. Batman movie. Now, Batman is one of those characters that, I mean, how can you not love Batman, right? I mean, he's the conquering hero. He's the ever-present help at all times with amazing, really cool gadgets. And so we're going to dive right in this morning, and we're going to pick up at a point where Batman has just stuck himself right in the middle of another one of the Joker's uh, schemes to take over Gotham. And Batman has infiltrated the Joker's lair and now is getting ready to, uh, to defuse this bomb that's set to go off and destroy Gotham. So let's check this out as, uh, as Batman gets ready to once again do his thing. So once again, Batman has saved the day. And as you can see, he's quite humble about it, right? Oh, thank you, Batman. Oh, I'm blushing super hard under my mask. Batman, I love you more than my kids. Me too, guy, <laughs> right? Batman's public life is all about being the conquering hero. It's all about being the one that everybody loves, that everybody wants to be around. Now, we cut a little section out here. Uh, the section where he goes to the orphanage, right? He shows up in the orphanage and he's, and he, he's wanting to love on these orphanage kids and he brings his, uh, his bat merch gun and he starts shooting all the orphans with his bat merch gun and they're, pretty soon they're plastered in you know, Batman gear from, from head to toe. And even there, Batman's love of the orphans really is sort of about cloaking them in himself, right? Now, uh, I want to do a little shameless plug right here. I, I love the Batman mask in the back corner, by the way. Thank you so much for wearing that. It's amazing. I have my Batman idea counter shirt on today, so I'm, I'm with you, right? So, uh, so I want to give a little shameless plug. This Saturday, September the 23rd, we are heading back up to Pumpkin Town, which is where Miracle Hills uh, Children's Home is located, and they house orphans there, kids who are a part of the DSS system who have been removed from their homes for one reason or another. And we're headed up there on Saturday to hang out with them and to love on them. We're not going to shoot them with GFN merch guns or Batman merch guns. <laughs> we're just going to have a good time with them. And we're going to grill them some hamburgers and some hot dogs and feed some food, feed them some food and have an opportunity to just love them and hang out with them and be the tangible expression of Jesus to them. I would love for you guys to come hang out with me while we do that. It's going to be 23rd this Saturday from 10 o'clock until 2 o'clock, okay? I checked. The Gamecocks and the Tigers both don't kick off till 3.30, right? So, so come tailgate with us and then head to your game, right? But 10 to 2. If you want to know how to get there, go to gfnchurch.info, and there's a link to a map on there that you can check it out, Okay. So Batman, again, his public life is all about saving the day. His public life is all about being the conquering hero. This public life is all about, hey, thanks, Batman. We love you so much. Blushing super hard under my mask. You're the greatest, Batman. Pray hands, pray hands, pray hands, right? But what happens when Batman gets home? Let's check it out.
so here you have this guy, Batman, who has absolutely anything that he wants. I mean, he's a billionaire bachelor by day and a crime-stalking, fighting vigilante at night. He lives in the largest house that you could ever possibly imagine, filled with, with stuff that's just, you know, so over the top that it's ridiculous. I mean, what, you want a theater room that is, a, you know, can seat 100? Yeah, it's right around the corner, just up on the third floor, right? Uh, he's got all these gadgets. Even as Batman, he's got the Batarang, the Bat car, the Bat scooter, the Bat, you know, I mean, whatever. Absolutely everything that the guy could want. And yet, even though he has everything and he's wanting for no thing, something's still missing. Now, Batman as a superhero is, is kind of interesting to me. I think maybe one of the reasons why he's appealing to some is because uh, unlike a lot of the other superheroes, there's nothing superhuman about Batman. I mean, there's no kryptonite. There's no, like, alien origin, right? There's no freak chemical accident that caused him to be who he was or some kind of a weird spider, sorry, John Kyle, that bit him and made him into this, you know, radioactive mutant thing that can climb walls. He's just a normal guy. I mean, yeah, bill, billionaire, whatever. But, but he's a normal, right? And I think that it's there that we find this connecting point. Because somewhere deep down inside, maybe we could be Batman. I mean, you know, if we had the right stuff, if we had the right access to the, to the billions of dollars that Bruce Wayne has, if we had the passion and the dedication to chisel our bodies into this crime-fighting mechanism with, what is it, is it nine abs, Graham? Is that right? Batman has, right? Nine abs, Batman? That's right. He has an eight-pack and he has one extra ab, unlike the rest of humanity, right? So maybe if we're blessed with this physical prowess, we too could become Batman and we could become the hero at the center of the story. We could become the one that is wanting for no thing. As the movie continues on, this guy who seemingly is wanting for nothing this guy continues to go through this very interesting process. The one that we see exposed just a little bit by his friend Alfred here, who begins to point out that maybe there's something else going on here. And as it goes on, every relationship in Batman's life begins to get strained. His relationship with Alfred, the one who raised him when he was orphaned as a child, uh, his relationship with the city as there's a new commissioner in town who thinks that maybe the city has depended on Batman just a little bit too much. His relationship with this orphaned child that he accidentally adopts. <laughs> Even his relationship with the Joker, his arch nemesis, begins to get strained. We're going to pick the movie back up here towards the end. Where interestingly enough, the Joker's next plot actually is succeeding. And part of the core of the, what is causing the Joker's newest plot to succeed is his realization that Batman doesn't actually need him. And so the Joker has, has uh, betrayed his own friends, gone it alone, gone to the Phantom Zone, released all the bad guys from the Phantom Zone who now have descended on Gotham, have drawn Batman out, they've captured Batman, and Batman has now been banished by the Joker to the Phantom Zone. Check it out. So Batman... When he arrives in the Phantom Zone, is finally confronted for the first time with the reality of the life that he's been living. He gets to see himself from the outside. And as you go through scene after scene after scene that has taken place over the course of the movie, you, it's like you can see the defensive layers sort of 
begin to drop from, Bath, from Batman as he begins to realize what he's done. <laughs> you, you know, like the life that he's actually been living. Until it culminates in, the, in our scene here where Batman is confronted with the fact that his friends, the ones that he just pushed away, the ones that he's been holding at arm's distance, the ones that he's been really seeing as tools to be used for his own ends, his friends have now made the decision to sacrifice themselves to save him. And something shifts inside of Batman. And he begins to realize, wait, 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 wait. And he, he decides that something must be done. Now, Batman has always saved the day, right? I mean, that's what he does. He's always saved the day. But this time is somehow different than the time before. Because one of the things that Batman realizes is that for him to save the day this time, it means he's got to be willing to lay his life down. The talking brick told him, listen, if I'm going to let you go, I need you to bring all of the bad guys back here. And I mean all the bad guys, which included him. And Batman had to realize there's a price that saving my friends is going to cost me. We pick back up in our movie, uh, the crisis is over. Batman and his friends have once again saved the day. The city's come together and they've, they've literally come together to bring the city uh, and to save the city from destruction. And Batman, while the city rejoices, has walked away quietly. Check out what happens. The central plot of this movie is not the Joker's scheme to take over Gotham. The central plot is the dismantling of Batman's self-consumption. Listen to these words from John chapter 12. This is from another superhero, uh, the real superhero. Jesus, who has just arrived in Jerusalem as the conquering hero, to many of the same cheers that we probably heard Batman receive in the beginning of the movie, although maybe not the I love you more than your kids or my own kids. But Jesus has just arrived as the conquering hero that the city and the country and the nation thinks they need. But Jesus' path to being the savior, to being the superhero, is maybe just a little different than what we've seen from some others. He says this, starting in verse 23. Jesus says, The time has come for the human one or the son of man to be glorified. I assure you that unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it can only be a single seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives will lose them. And those who hate their lives in this world will keep them forever. Whoever serves me must follow me. Wherever I am, there my servant will also be. My father will honor whoever serves me. Now I'm deeply troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this time? No. For this reason, I've come to this time. Father, glorify your name. Batman discovered that it's actually in losing his life, in giving himself up, that he found everything that he was looking for that he never really knew he needed. Our world and our culture tells us, get as much as you can, as quickly as you can get it, and by whatever means you can get it. And then protect what you have at any cost. The gospel says, lose it all, and you'll find everything you ever needed. Now, that's true in really big ways, like redemption. 
If you've been living a self-consumed life, one that's just concerned about your own goods, and, and uh, man, I can give you a whole nother talk on there. I've been where you're at. <laughs> I chased all those dreams. And at the end of it all, landed in a very similar spot to what we see our friend Batman struggling with. It's almost as though, and you can, there's a whole book in the Bible <laughs> that's about this as well, right? Where you can read about someone who pursued pleasure, pursued self-gratification, pursued all of it, and, and came to the realization at the end that it's all, it's all meaningless. It's all like this vapor that we just can't grab a hold of. The gospel says that it's in losing all of that that we actually find. So it's true in the big sense in terms of, yeah, I'm not going to live for myself anymore, but I'm going to actually release and stop trying, to, stop trying to satisfy myself on my own, stop trying to figure out life on my own, stop trying to make sense of it all, stop trying to look inside. The world tells us, look inside, keep looking inside, and eventually you'll find truth. No, truth is not found inside. Truth is found outside. We are throats. <laughs> we are empty things that are created to receive that which we need to sustain us from outside of ourselves. This is also true in a million little ways. Every day, I have an opportunity to lose myself again. Just like in my relationship with my wife, I told my wife, I do, and I will, regardless, until I die. And I made that decision, and I promised her that on December 16th in the year of 2000. But guess what? I get to make that same promise to her every single day, a million times throughout the day. And it's in picking that back up where I lay myself back down that that promise is sustained. Now, I, I, don't know your, I don't know all of your backstories and I don't know where you're at this morning, but maybe today you've come and, and you know, like our friend Bruce, uh, you've been hurt. And you didn't choose it. You know, your parents may not have gone through what his parents went through. It may not be the similar circumstances, but maybe there's some pain. And that pain is, has, has sort of caused you to keep this mask on. Isn't it funny how this character, Bruce, we never see Bruce hardly ever in this movie until the very, very end when he actually finally takes his mask off. And maybe you've got some metaphorical masks or some armor or some protection that you've been holding on to, and it's time for you to kind of let that go. Maybe you've bought into the lie that this life is about getting everything that you can by any means that you can and then holding on to that stuff and protecting it at any cost. Jesus wants to free you from that stuff today. He wants to free you from even that dream and show you the life that you were really created for. The worship team is, is going to... Uh, is going to sing a song, and, and you can sing along. You can respond in your seat. The altars are here this morning. You can respond to the altar. But, but I think, like, I really don't care a whole lot about the Lego Batman movie. My kids love it. I think it's hilarious. What I care about is I think Jesus wants us to lay ourselves down again today. I think he wants us again this morning. And I don't care if you've been walking with him for 75 years or 75 seconds <laughs> or zero seconds. Jesus may be trying to draw you just a little bit deeper into himself this morning. And maybe there's some stuff he's been talking to you about. Maybe there's some stuff that you've been hanging on to. Pain from the past, dreams for your future. Today, I wanna to give us an opportunity to respond. Not to me, not to the message, certainly not to the Lego Batman movie, but to Jesus. Yeah? Father, today, as we enter into this moment, God, I pray that your spirit would do what only your spirit can do. 
And that is to come and to speak and to somehow in, somehow interpret. And it's not really even just about words or knowledge, but it's just, it's an encounter with you. It's, it's literally running into the God of the universe in a myriad of tiny personal little ways all across this room today where God, you are coming and you are speaking specifically and directly to each and every one of us. God, I, I wanna lay my life back down to you today. It's yours, whatever you want. I, I'm sorry for the ways that I've tried to be the hero. I'm sorry for the ways that I've, I've even turned the, the gifts that you have given into an opportunity for self-glorification. Man, everything you've given is for your glorification. Even, even Jesus, in this last hour, we hear him as he's moving towards the cross saying, I'm deeply troubled because of what I know this is gonna cost me, yet glorify yourself, God, through my life. I lay it all down for your sake. Father, do, do what only you can do in this place. As we sing, if you, if you want to come, come and pray. If you want to respond where you're at, respond where you're at and pray. And let Jesus do what Jesus wants to do in your life today. Thank you for this day, Lord. Um, Father, I pray that you would continue to pursue us, Lord. Uh, Jesus, that you would find us in every place where we may be. God, I pray that you would turn your face towards us, that you would smile, God, on us, and that you would grant peace to every person that's here. And Lord, I pray that you would continue, um, yeah, God, just continue to pursue us in the way that you pursue us. And whatever you need to do in our lives, whatever you need to do in any of us, Jesus, to continue to get our attention, to cause us to drop our pretenses, to cause us to drop our self-projections, our self-protections, to release our self-consumption and to be swallowed up in the gospel, which is all that we ever needed and more. Would you do it? I believe that you will. Thank you, Father, for these people, and thank you for this day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. See you all.